Alright, what's up everybody? This is Ingram. I am one of the Minecrafters and today we're going to start, I guess it's kind of like a little tiny little series. Um, we're going to be doing stuff with red power frame motors and frames, tube frames and red power frames. And what we're going to be doing is, if you were in the live stream last week, um, I built uh, an omnidirectional airship that also had a giant mining drill on it. But what we're going to do is we're going to start, a lot of people were asking me for how to build that. So we're going to start a, a series. We're going to end up with, um, I'm not really sure what the end result's going to be. It's going to be an airship of some sort that you can fly up, down, left, right. Um, it's going to be controlled by computer craft, and we'll walk through how to do all that. Um, it's going to be fun. It should, it should be good. And we're going to add a bunch of stuff. If you watch the live stream, the code in that live stream, this is a major disclaimer. I literally wrote that like two minutes before the live stream started. And then we hacked it like ten different people were, were poking around in it during the live stream. So if you saw that, that is not how I normally code. Um, but that's, you know, how you code when you got to get something done and it's got to look ugly. So, all right, let's start out. All right, the first thing we're going to look at um, are there's there's three different types of frames. There's a support frame, there's a tube frame, and there's a red power tube frame. Now each of these does a little bit more than the other. The support frame will carry all the blocks or any block that is attached to it on any one of these sides. Support frames are sticky. And for example, if I were to move this support frame right now, the block behind it would actually get, try to get moved along with it. Um, tube frames are the same as a support frame except they have a red power tube hidden inside them and that's awesome um, and we'll show how that's used later and a red power tube frame is the same thing as a tube frame except now you have a redstone signal can be carried by the tube these are all going to be moved by this thing called a frame motor and this is what it looks like you have one side that is going to be moving the frames will be moved in the direction of that arrow and um, if you actually the graphics are horrible in the default pack but you notice that the arrow is going this way. This is important to note. And if you come way back, this looks like a little dial, and there's like this little thing right here. Um, that little dial is facing the opposite direction of the arrow, or the direction that the frames will be moved. So let me say that a little bit differently. If the arrow is going this way, notice how this thing is also pointing back that way. Um, so you can use that to figure out, and you'll see why you need that, because some of these get kind of tricky to figure out which way the frame motor is pointing when they're buried inside of different things. The next thing you need to know about frame motors is they need a redstone signal to run which can be provided by anything. It can be provided by redstone cable, um, redstone dust, a lever here, a button, anything you want. But they also need, if I can sneak around, they also need blue electric power. And you see the difference. Look at the graphic here. It's kind of like a dark blue. And over here is a light blue. That's because I have um, wired blue electric power which is just coming from this solar panel array and all that stuff um, standard blue electricity um, and now if I I'm actually gonna let me take whoops let me grab a new lever I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put that on the side here so that we can watch this and aside from the horribly glitchy texture what that's doing is it's actually rolling um, the front of this block forward. The next important thing to note is that you can rotate these frame motors um, with a screwdriver. And you'll notice this is, is actually very difficult to do. Um, just simply right clicking will rotate the face of it and that's easy to understand. But if you shift right click it begins to rotate the whole block. And this can be very tricky to figure out how this thing is facing um, and where it's going to go next. It's really not that intuitive. Um, if anybody has a trick for, for figuring that out other than modifying the texture pack, um, please let us know in the comments. That'll definitely help a lot of people out. It'll certainly help me out. Uh, you can kind of tell that the gr corners are graded a little bit differently on some of these different sides. Um, these obviously give you an indication. This is clearly, um, this is the bottom, this is the top notice by the arc and then this thing should be facing out that way which if we look at the top yes it is okay so those are some clues but when you start rotating this remember shift right click rotates the whole block and just plain right click rotates the faces okay um, rotates the direction alright next is the actual movement and this is just a redstone timer and if you pulse a timer at exactly 0.8 seconds it is the fastest and the smoothest 
that these things can operate. So what I've done here is I've got a motor. This is a deployer with a bunch of support frames, way more than I would ever need. Um, and then this is just a timer at 0.8 seconds. And watch, when I turn this thing on, it's going to pulse the deployer to deploy a frame in front of the motor. Then the motor is also going to pulse and move the frame up one. And you can see, I really don't know what is up with that graphics, but you can see how smooth that is going up. Okay, 0.8 is the smoothest you're going to get. Um, so make sure to set, if you're doing a timer, make sure to set it for that. And if you're doing stuff with computer craft, make sure to use 0.8 of a the next thing we need to know is that frames stick on all sides and will pull blocks up when they move. So I've stuck two orange pieces of wool, one on the top, one on the side. When we move this up with this frame motor down here, when we move this up, what's going to happen is these blocks are stuck to the frame because frames are sticky and they will move with the frame. Now, the reason I built this on the ground is because notice how that the bottom of that frame, which is see-through, um, is touching the ground. If I turn this thing on, see how it pulls the ground up with it? That's something you need to know. You need to pay attention to that because sometimes if you're building this elaborate thing and you turn the, the lever, you can rip apart part of your machine. So make sure you know that. We're going to learn how to deal with that um, in just a few minutes. And by just a few minutes, I actually meant just a few seconds. So the way to deal with that is by the use of covers. Now I just have, this is a, a plain wool cover. You can see its thickness there. This is a red power cover. You have a ton of them to pick from if you look through cover. Okay, all these are available for you. And what they do is they make that one face, that one side, smooth. So if I go, I'll show you how to apply these things. Um, when you hover over, okay, you see how it kind of like fits in? Can you see that? How it fits into the frame? And then you just right click to deploy. And there you go. And it like fits in. It's got this little frame. If it looks like that, it's wrong it means it's on the outside see how the um, the frame is not you, you can tell you know what I'm talking about right so what I did is there's a cover on this side okay touching this orange thing and there's a cover on the bottom so now if we pull that up it doesn't move this block and it doesn't pull the, the um, grass up with it panels are slightly different from covers and I've used red panel here let me just grab a wool panel and I use this one right here you can use any one you want and for a thickness comparison I'm going to do the following you can see the the different thickness there um, panels okay allow things to attach to the frame see how I have I have a bunch of stuff that normally would not be able to stick to a frame a lever can't go on a frame okay but if you put a panel on there then you can stick it on it's basically um, all of your partial blocks are going to be able to connect to a frame through the use of a panel. And again, it's the same exact way. Just see how it's applying that panel to the side of the frame. Click, boom, you're all set. This is important because it lets you attach things like wire. Um, this thing, obviously, your lever is going to be attached that way. Um, and also what I've done here is you don't need a panel necessarily to do this, but frames are sticky on all sides which means that if I put something like this it's technically sticking to that side of the frame this cover right here is sticking to that side of the frame so if we move this um, which we're not going to but if we move this actually yeah we are let me get a lever right here I don't have any electricity. let me wire that up and I'll be right. okay so I wired that into electricity, and you can see that the little lights here are all lit up now what we're gonna do is if you notice this okay is going to have the wire. I mean, this is normal. These are just uh, red power lamps. You expect this. And now, if we move this thing, two things are going to happen. One, all of the wiring is going to stay, okay? But this side is not using um, a panel. And so, what's going to happen is it's going to try and pull this up with it, and it's going to end up breaking. There we go. It moved everything. Everything that was on the panel stayed perfectly fine. You notice also the cover stayed because it's technically touching the frame. But um, this piece of wire that was here was touching a frame, as far as the frame is concerned, but it wasn't protected by a panel, and so it ripped it right off. So right now you're probably thinking to yourself, man, I'm going to make a giant floating city. Well, you can, but the maximum number of frames that you can put is 1,000, okay? That is a not a hard limit. You can modify that in the config file, but you probably shouldn't go over that 
um, especially if you're on multiplayer. If you're on single player, you probably should be fine, but if you're on multiplayer, I really wouldn't tweak that too much because then everybody can build giant floating cities and it's got to update everything in them. Um, so anyway, maximum number of frames. Now this is frames. This is not blocks. So right now, this little unit right here only has six frames, even though it's got all this stuff slapped on top of it. Um, so you can get pretty creative. Um, you can stagger the frames so that you're filling in. You're not wasting frames. Um, there's a number of things that you can do. Again, you can edit that in the um, config file. Now you can build something that is bigger than a thousand. You're just gonna have to split it into chunks, and with one motor move the first thousand, and with the second motor move the second thousand to catch them up to the first. Um, so there is a way to do it, but not advised. Next, we're gonna take a look at tube frames, and tube frames are just as you'd expect a combination of a frame and a red power tube, and it's pretty easy to see that because um, you can look right inside them. They connect like normal. Okay, so you can see that the tube is seamlessly connected. Um, and all I have here is just an ejector, and we're going to watch this ejector is going to pump something into the red power frame tube or tube frame um, and dump it into the chest. All right, so as soon as we do this, and you can see that these frames act just as a frame in that if I move this, all this stuff would stick, but they also can act as red power tubes. So they have all the same routing as red power tubes and everything. Now there's also a red power red stone tube, and it's the same as a normal tube if you don't already know this, but it conveys a red stone signal. And what I've done here is this is a deployer. It's going to deploy an orange piece of wool. This is a block breaker. Um, and I'm going to show you how these convey signal. Now you'll notice that Again, this works uh, just like you would expect. It's a red power tube and it's a frame. They work just the same. Okay. Um, you cannot put um, a logic gate directly against it. See how it's not connecting to the logic gate? And if I were to break that and try and pulse this, it's not going to do anything, right? But you can connect jacketed red wire to them. And I've done that here, and you can see, if you look very carefully, you can see how the connection is made in there. Now that's going to propagate this signal. It's going to carry the signal all the way through all the redstone. Um, but I don't want it to, for example, if I didn't want it to connect to this block, which I am, and I am having it connect here, but say, for example, I didn't want it to connect down here. Um, I did slap. It's very difficult to see. Let me just jump down into the ground here a little bit. You can see I slapped the cover right there, and because I slapped the cover, you can see that the redstone tube no longer connects to the bottom of the block breaker. Okay, and so if we turn this thing on, we can see the redstone signal. Okay, you can see the tube acting normally. So this thing is breaking; it's going into the back of this, and tube routing is taking over and saying, "Hey, the only valid destination is back over here." And there you go. So where that's important is if you're going to build a drill head for a mobile mining unit for example you can put all these block breakers facing down and then attach them to frames red stone tube frames and pulse the frames which will pulse all the block breakers the block breakers will break the thing in front of them and spit out the block that they just ingested into the tube network and then you just attach a chest anywhere um, so you can have an entire drill all right, so what I did is I actually just built what I was just talking about. This is a, a sample drill bit that could go into the ground. Um, this part up here is going to be coming from your uh, mobile airship, or actually can be coming from whatever you want. Uh, you probably have deployers and frame motors hooked up to this to actually add more frames to the top and to push it down at the same time. Um, and what you're going to do, what I was really wanting to show here was the use of these red power frames. So you have all these redstone tubes remember to cover the sides because it's going to go down into the into the ground um, to cover the sides with covers but I'm going to leave I'm going to leave these open so we can see what's going on in there um, and these are block breakers aimed downward this is the face where they will um, ingest stuff and then they'll spit it out the back and then that's going to come right into you can see the tube comes up in this this block right here that's going to go into your ender chest and we're going to control the whole thing with wireless transmitters down there. The signal will get received into here. And these are panels. Remember, the red ones in this tutorial series are panels. And this is redstone um, wire. And it's just connecting like that. And see, it connects to the tube. So the signal is going to come in from this device into here, into the whole tube, 
pulse all these block breakers. The block breakers are going to ingest the blocks up them and then into this ender chest. All right, so if we put some orange wool, we'll just watch this. I don't know that we'll be able to get over here fast enough to see this do it. We will try. Boom, just ingested them, and you can kind of see they all went up. Okay, that's how this is going to work. This last thing that we're going to cover in this particular part is probably the most important thing I can tell you. Um, it is extremely easy to grind an entire project to a halt. All you need is one block that's not touching a frame. And you're, I guarantee you, I put this little note here, I guarantee you when you're troubleshooting, this is the reason your airship does not work. Okay? This is why. The thing, the frame motor will have power, the redstone signals will be working, but the frame motor will not turn because something is in the way. Now if we look at this setup, it's kind of a simple little setup, just a bunch of frames here. Um, and what I'm trying to illustrate is this block right here, this basalt paver, is attached to these frames. It's fine. Okay? This little yellow block right here, okay? I just made it tiny to illustrate a point, but it can it can be anything. It can be one of these giant blocks. It doesn't doesn't matter, okay? This thing if we were trying to move this set of frames in this direction, this is in the way. It is not attached to a frame. And if we try and move this, if you look at my radar, if we're trying to move south, which is to move this way, okay, this thing is going to be in the way. If we're trying to move up, it's fine. It's not in the way. It's going to slide right by. But if we try and move south, it's going to block the whole thing. So that's going to confuse you. You're going to say, well, I can move up, I can move left, I can move right, but why can't I move south? I can move north, whatever. Okay, that's why. Now this one up here should be fine because technically it's inside of the block space controlled by that frame right there. So if we tried to move up, down, left, right, forward, backwards, this guy would not impede the movement. This guy, because he's not touching a frame, will kill you if you try and move in this direction. Um, to further illustrate that point, this orange block is not touching any of these frames. So if we try and move anywhere but um, th this way or this way, where this piece could it could slide around this center column here, it's going to crash. If we try and move south, this is going to get in the way. If we try and move north, it's going to get in the way. Up, down, same thing because it's not touching any frames. Now if you want like this and didn't care about how everything looked, now you're fine because these this frame is touching this frame which is part of the whole unit. Okay, You're making a solid connection then you're coming down the front and connecting that middle block. Another thing to note is that this will not work because these frames are not connected to the main body of frames. This will not work because you cannot share a block like this and hope that it will join the frames. You have to connect frames to frames. You basically want one seamless run of frames to connect your entire thing. So your mind is probably worrying with all the possibilities of what you can do. We are going to, in the next episode, take a look at that. But before we go, what can you do with just what we've learned right now? Well, why not build a giant movable statue of yourself and unfortunately it's not of you it's of me dun 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 uh, Boba Fett technically I didn't really have my own theme music did I I was just kind of a pimp and said you know pimp things and like arrested Han Solo but uh, <clears throat> there you go you can make a giant movable statue of yourself. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at setting these things up in a crazy way. And we are going to build um, what's been called an omnidirectional airship. Basically what that means is that you can have something that flies around in Minecraft um, and is pretty cool. And we're going to do... Um, setting up the engine, then we're going to look maybe in another episode at how to tie it into computer craft, how to remotely power it with build uh, with Bluetricity and all that stuff. So stick around, give us the comments, give us some feedback. Um, let us know what you want to see. Let us know if you want something built on the ship. Let us know if you want 
what the ship to look like, right? The engine's easy. I'll build the engine. It it's, can look pretty ugly, but the rest of it, um, maybe get some feedback from you guys and, and figure out what it's going to look like. It cannot be Slave 1. We're already going to do that in the live stream, um, but it could be, I don't know, it could be an Imperial Star Destroyer. It really doesn't matter, all right? So let us know. Hopefully this helped. This is a primer for what's coming next. Make sure you watch this, although that doesn't do you any good if I say it and you didn't watch it. So anyway, all right, this is Ingram. Minecrafters, check us out on Facebook.com. We are the Minecrafters.com on Facebook. We also have a website, the Minecrafters.com. And we are on Twitter. Ingram is our Twitter handle because that's the way we roll. And we also have an IRC where there's a ton of people all the time. It's basically a chat room that's open and we are in there all the time helping people out. So check out the Minecrafters.com slash IRC and make sure you join us. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live stream. That's all, guys. Thanks, and stay poised.